Mark, hey, you think we need to be prepared to eat that recession cake. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're when you get stimmy check after stimmy check, unfortunately, you know, our economy is at a point where, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to take our medicine. Um, if you just listen to what Jay Powell has said over the course of the last few months, he was all about soft landing. Then soft landing became softish landing, whatever that means. And then that became things are going to be painful, which insinuates kind of a hard landing. Right. Let's remember, you know, with the with the economy slowing, the Fed has a dual mandate, price stability and full employment, not propping up the stock market. And despite what a lot of people believe, not avoiding recessions either. I understand there's a high correlation between the unemployment rate and recessions, but that is not a direct mandate. And look, consensus seems to believe right now that there's less than a 50 percent chance of a recession, that it would be next year, that it would be short and shallow. I disagree with all those things. I think the recession is going to be longer and deeper than most people believe. And I'm not a Johnny come lately well, jumping on the recession bandwagon. I've been saying this for months, John. Why do you think that? Is it because you think it's going to take sustained, significant uh, rate rises that are going to slow the economy down to the point of shrinking and that, you know, the Fed has enough room for unemployment uh, to to rise a bit and still be within the mandate? Yeah, well, if you think about it, so I, I think there's like 11 and a half million job openings. So as a, as a business owner myself, when things get tight, the very first thing I'm going to do is take down the job posting. So that 11.5 number will start to come down, but the unemployment rate won't go up yet. Eventually, the unemployment rate will go up because the Fed has to combat inflation. They're going to have to deal with it incredibly harshly. And, and John, if you think about it, I mean, over 50 percent of the U.S. population has less than $50,000 in retirement savings. Do you think they care if their 401k drops another 10 percent? They don't. What they care about is they want to make sure that their, their paycheck lasts all the way through the month, that they have enough money in their paycheck to put gas in their car, put food on the table. So inflation needs to be dealt with harshly. And I think that means we got to take our medicine. And so therefore, what should investors be prepared for to happen to stocks in the near term, particularly growth stocks and maybe even, um, you know, th these broader market indices like uh, those who are looking at just the S&P? So I think in the short term, you could see kind of an oversold bounce. I'm not as concerned about the short term. I do think longer term, I think there is more pain ahead. John, despite how bearish I sound, um, we actually did buy some stocks last week. We've been sitting like 17 to 18 percent in cash, went down to 15 percent now. But we've been focusing all along the way on high grading that portfolio, moving up the quality ladder. But our positioning is very defensive. I mean, you take... Um, you know, consumer discretionary, that sector as an example, which, you know, it's been a complete bloodbath in that sector. We're buying companies that are more staples like. So we added the Target, we added the McDonald's, we added the Planet Fitness. Those are companies that in my in my mind are going to be less impacted by a recession. All right. By the strip mall, sounds like you're saying, you know, back <laughs> to it. basics. All right. Mark Tepper, thank you.